the Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise God, this is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm glad you could join us once again this week as we continue with our special, I guess you'd call it rebroadcast, of Keith Moore's message uh, that I found so important, so important to the body of Christ. I really believe that everybody needs to hear this message. And so we started last week. If you missed last week's netcast, go back and watch it first and then start playing this week's netcast to get the continuation of this message by Pastor Keith Moore from Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. I do want to mention that I wrote Faith Life Church an email and I asked them specifically for permission to rebroadcast this uh, program and they were very gracious to give us permission to do that. I greatly appreciate that. As a matter of fact, they even said, welcome to our Faith Life family getting the word out to the world. I love that attitude. See, that is the way it should be, that we're reaching the world with the gospel, reaching the world with the word of faith message. And so it's great to have folks like that that have similar uh, goals and want to bless folks that way. So I'm excited about that. We're going to go right into that message now. And I want you to stay tuned and listen closely to Pastor Moore's message. So he said, take heed that the light that is in you be not darkness. If your whole body, therefore, be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light as when the bright shining of a candle, we might say like a light bulb today, does give you light. Now with that in mind, go back to John 12. Who is the light? Jesus is the light. He is the light. John 12, 35, Jesus said to them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walks in darkness knows not where he goes. Have you ever met anybody that didn't know where they were going? I'm not talking about just on the road. I'm talking about in life. They don't know where they're going. They don't know who they are. They don't know what they are. They don't know where they're supposed to be. They don't know what they're supposed to be doing. They don't know who they're supposed to be hooked up with. That's a person who's full of darkness. They're stumbling around. They go here and try that and it flops. They go over here and try that and it flops. They go over here and why? Because they're stumbling around in the dark. When you have light, you don't deal with these other 400 choices because you know that's not for you. You go right here because you saw that's it. Oh, come on. Can you see this? You don't stumble all over everything. You make a beeline. You go straight to it. You do it. The Bible said you have an unction of the Holy One and you know all things. We have a knowing inside us. We can know where we're supposed to be. We can know what we're supposed to be doing. And, and you hear people talking all over the place about, well, I, I, I wish I could get direction. I wish I could get this. And, and so many have acted like, well, it's just we, we need more revelation. But, but that's not really the case. The case is people have received light that they refuse to walk in. They have rejected it. And that's a serious thing. When you see something that you're supposed to do and you choose not to do it, that means you just closed your eyes. Now you're in the dark. Did you hear me? And people stumble around like this for decades acting like they don't know what to do. And eventually, you can confuse yourself and deceive yourself to the point where you are self-deceived. But there was a time when you knew. You just didn't want to do it. You just were unwilling. 
These individuals that Jesus was talking to, he said, if you were blind, if you really didn't see, you wouldn't have sin. But you say we see. And they did. We read, you know, where the, one of the rulers of the synagogue, the main guy, said, have any of the rulers believed on him? And the implication is none of them have. And we read in the scripture that, yes, many of them actually did believe in him. Last week we saw, but they wouldn't confess him for fear of the Jews. Now, come on, get this picture, guys. Many of the religious leaders of Jesus' day saw in their heart that he really was from God. And they saw what he was doing and what he was preaching was right and good. They saw it. But they sat there and went along with the mock trial. They went along with him being crucified. And they knew better. They saw better. Well, how many know if they didn't make a change after that, they were in darkness, weren't they? They would have stumbled around. Should we be honest about what we see and what we know? Should we acknowledge it when we see it? Oh, yes, friends. So important that we do. He said, verse 36, Why you have the light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of light. Are you a child of the light? Yes. Skip on down to verse 46. I am come a light into the world, that whoso believeth in me should not abide in darkness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Skip on over to the 15th chapter. This is big. I'm having to pick and choose. Read the whole thing. We might be here all afternoon. Not that that'd be a bad thing. John 15, 22. The Lord said, If I had not come and spoken to them, they had not had sin." But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated, both me and my father. But this comes to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. We've already touched on this, they were seeing much more than they were acknowledging. Is it true with us? Are we seeing more than we're perceiving or acknowledging? I know at, at the moment you may not think this is what you want to hear or be excited about, but I'm telling you that it is. It is. He is light. In him is no darkness at all. Right? If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we're walking with him, but we walk in darkness, 1 John 1 says we're lying. And we're not doing the truth. This statement the Lord gave me some years ago, and it, it enlightened me and helps me to this day. Ignorance needs instruction or requires instruction. But rebellion needs discipline. I'll say that again slowly. Ignorance needs what? Hmm? Y'all going to help me with this this morning? Ignorance needs what? 
If somebody doesn't see and doesn't understand, what do they need? They need instruction. They need to be taught. They need to be informed. They need to be instructed. What if they already know they just are rebellious? Do they need more instruction? They see it. They understand. They know they just are rebelling against it. Do they need more instruction? Is that what they need? As, as a whole movement in the word and faith movement and teaching, that's been our MO with everything. More teaching. Right? That's what they need. More teaching. We have a whole generation that are rearing their children that way. Well, they just need some more instruction. They need some more input. No, if they know what to do, they don't need more instruction. You telling them another 50 times is not going to make them less rebellious. They saw it last year. Are y'all with me? Rebellion doesn't need instruction. It needs discipline. Discipline. Another word for discipline? Action. Quit talking and act. And I'm not just talking about beating a child. <laughs> I said action. It could be pulling privileges. Hmm? It could be canceling opportunities. But you don't need to talk. You need to do. Act. And man, we got a whole generation of folk that are pitiful in this department. They are spineless when it comes to acting. They'll, leave, they'll even threaten for weeks. Now, if you don't do this, then you're not going to get to do that. And they don't do it, but they let them do it anyway. Oh, friends, if you do that, you are misrepresenting God. You're teaching that child that God is like you. And they're going to get a rude awakening. <laughs> Because they can put on those crocodile tears and they can roll their eyes and they can plead and beg with him and it will not change him. And they can think because it worked with you and it worked with grandma and it worked with auntie and it worked with this one and it worked with the school teacher and it worked with the gym teacher. This is going to work with God. And it doesn't. You know why? He knows what you know. He knows what you see. Children get into this at an early age. You say, did you take the trash out? Oh, was it my turn? Was I supposed to do it? And they knew it was. People laugh and say, well, look at him. He's a little con. He already knows how to manipulate mom and daddy. Ha, ha, ha. It ain't funny. That is the very nature of the devil. And if they, if they learn how to manipulate people and they practice that through their life, their life will be a disaster. They will, they will ruin one thing after another through their whole life. They will stumble around in the darkness. You've got to have an honest heart before God. And if you knew, you knew. And if you knew, you need to say you knew. If you saw it, you saw it. Hmm? Well, why didn't you do it? Uh, lazy. Why didn't you do it? Hmm. Rebellious. Someone says, why? Who's going to do that? 
Anybody who wants mercy and grace and who wants another opportunity. Go to Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28. Now, why are we talking about this? Did Jesus run into this with these people he was ministering to? Did they see more than they were letting on? Yeah, they did. Is that a problem? Oh, oh, what a problem. Is it the same with people today? Are people changed? Are they pretty much the same today? People are the same. The devil's the same, always trying to deceive. He is, John 8, Jesus talked about it, the devil is a liar, and he is the father of lying. Deception began with him. And that ought to be enough for you to despise it and want nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. Never try to act like you don't know something when you do. It's devilish. It's a closing your eyes to light. It's a, it's a plunging yourself into a dark path that goes off into more darkness. If you want help, you've got to humble yourself. And you've got to be honest. Somebody say honest. 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 Is everybody awake? Do you, you see what we're talking about today? Is this important? Uh, Some way or another, I, I don't feel like I'm getting it out strong enough. It is so vital that we not play games with God or with each other. That we don't try to act like we are ignorant when we see. Proverbs 28, are you there? Verse 13. 28, 13, what does it say? He that covers his sins... What will happen? Hmm? Sometimes he'll prosper. If he makes enough confessions. No, he, he shall not prosper. But whoso confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. How many know no matter how bad it is, by the mercy of God, you can come out? Right? His grace is sufficient. I don't care how deep a hole you dug for yourself, how bad you messed up, with enough mercy, you can come out. With enough mercy. With enough mercy. But are you going to get mercy acting like you didn't know? No, you're not. Now, not only that, but see, mercy comes from God direct but also comes from him through others. God will be merciful to you by inclining people's hearts towards you, giving you favor in their eyes, and when you should be judged, them looking at you kindly and going, well, no need to do that. We'll do this. You can do it again. You, you can keep your position. You can have another opportunity. It's going to say grace. It's going to say mercy. mercy. You know, that's God having mercy on you, but he's doing it through them. Oh, come on, can you see it? But if you cover your sins through pride, God resists the proud. He's resisting you. And he will also resist you through people. You'll come and beg and they'll be hard as a rock. Are you listening? You, you'll have no favor with them and you will not have an opportunity to make it right. And it is at this critical point when somebody looks at you and asks you what you knew what you knew, what you understood. Who did it? 
something goes wrong. Something wasn't done. Something's not right. And somebody looks at you and goes, what happened? Are y'all with me now? Yes. What happened? Now here is where nine out of ten start covering their tracks. Hmm? And start saying, you know, well, uh, you know, what, what was it? What, were we supposed to do this? Or, or, or we didn't know? Or, friend, if you're lying, you're in trouble right now. You're in trouble with God. And you cannot prosper in this situation. Cannot. Amen. Are y'all with me? What do you need in a situation like this? Help me out. What do you need? You need mercy. You want grace. Who gets the grace? The humble get the grace. Are the humble honest? Does it take humility to be honest and tell the truth when it's not pretty? When it makes you look bad? When it'll embarrass you? Oh, come on. Are y'all with me, saints? This, this is critical. But if you're coming out, you got to have grace. Tell me who's coming out. According to this verse, put it up again, Proverbs 28, 13. According to this verse, who is going to get to mercy? Help me out. Who's going to get it? Who's going to get it? The people that confess it. What does that mean? Tell it. If you did it, you did it. Huh? If you wreck the car, run over the dog and burnt the house down. Huh? What do you say? Y'all gonna help me or not? What, what do you say? Do you know? If you did it, if you did it, you did it. Who did it? And if it was you, you go, somebody comes in and goes, who burnt the house down? Who burnt the house down? I'm telling you, five out of ten Christians will say, well, I came up here and it was a burning. It was, I don't know, in the dog, I don't know how he got under the car, but <laughs> it, was, uh, it just happened so fast. Liar. Liar. Devilish. Are you with me now? And see, even people that don't know you're lying, even people that don't know you're lying, their heart will harden towards you. Even when they don't know. And they don't know why they're that way. Why? Because God is not going to give you favor through them. Because you're hiding and covering your sin like Adam and Eve running into the bushes. Right? And when he asked them what happened, what are they doing? Right? That woman, the serpent, he was pointing somewhere, but there wasn't nobody around. <laughs> Everybody was pointing somewhere. Else. How many say dishonest, 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 deceptive, closing your eyes? See, the problem with God is there's no way you can fool him about what you see. He knows what, he was the one that showed it to you. He was there when you saw it. No way you can turn around later and tell him, uh, uh, I didn't know. I didn't see. Friend, this, get, get serious with your children on this kind of stuff. Did you do such and such, honey? Oh, no. Uh, I didn't know. You look at them and go, say what? You what? You didn't know. And if you know they knew, I mean the music stops. Everything stops right now. Because we were, we were making long okay until you decided to tell me a lie. Now it's become serious. This is life and death, whether you realize it or not. I don't know if you understand the gravity of what I'm talking about. Situations are made and broken in that moment when somebody looks at you and asks a question. Whether you're coming out of this or whether you're going down is decided right here, right now. 
as to whether you start playing games, you put on crocodile tears, you try to, you know, jive and shift around and, and, and make excuses and, and try to con somebody. Now you do that, you are on your own. You do not have the grace of God. You're not going to have the mercy of God. How many know without the grace of God, you're in trouble? You are in trouble. You're in trouble. But what if you'll be a man? <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people grew up in families where the truth was not held up like it should have been. It just wasn't. Their parents lied. Their parents told them to go tell the teacher a lie. We have not seen how serious this is. Oh, friend, this is one of the worst things you could do in life. And so they grew up like that. And so there are people who lie to you for no good reason. They just soon lie to you to tell you the truth. I've had preachers look me in the eye and just lie to me. One of the saddest things. I'd rather they slap me. I, I'm not joking. I'd rather they just reach out with their backhand and just lay one on me. Well, sir, you see, I am serious. Why? Because the enemy of my soul is doing that to me every day. Trying to deceive me and lie to me. Right? And he's doing the same thing to you. How dare we lie to each other? We're not children of lies. We're children of light. We're children of truth. The spirit of truth lives in us. But I don't care if you grew up lying. And if it's a habit with you, you can break yourself from it. I said you can break yourself if you will. Let me tell you how you do it. You know, people get carried away. They're on the phone. They're telling some story. They embellish. They elaborate. Lie. <laughs> and then you hang up and you realize, oh, man, I didn't tell that right. Tell me what you do. Tell me what you do. Call them right back. See, you already know well, what to do. Well, praise the Lord. Wasn't that exciting? I tell you, we'll finish this up next week. I know <laughs> it, it'd be great to be able to play the whole thing, but we have some time constraints because we do air the audio from this very netcast on Word of Faith Radio uh, every Sunday morning. Uh, that's Eastern Time, 930 Eastern Time on Sunday mornings and we have a 30 minute slot there so we have a little time limitation because of that so we're having to break it up into the last week's program this week's program and then we'll have another one next week so join us for that as we conclude the message next time now I want you to write me here I tell you I really want to hear from you that is of course right here at Word of Faith Ministries and the address is Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina. The zip code is 27262. And as always, you can write me. If you want to get to me a little faster uh, than the old style, you know, what we call snail mail. <laughs> you can use email uh, because it is so fast. It'll get to me literally almost immediately as soon as you send it. And that is D R B I L L, Dr. Bill at W O F M dot O R G. And uh, send it to that email address I've got on the screen. And I just want to hear from you. I want to hear what the program is doing in terms of ministering to you. And uh, just share with me your testimony about what the program means to you. That'd just be a blessing. Join us again next time. Remember until then to fulfill the Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.